G'day, Game Day Squad coaches. We're welcoming you all back for Game Day Squad's Aussie Rules Show. This is for round six. I've got the full crew here today. I'm back off my sickness. Callum, how you going, mate? It's Dawn. Sickness? It wasn't sickness. You just didn't want to show up after my port beat your swans. Don't try <laughs> it never and put it as that. Yeah, I'm just going to milk that one for as long as I can. But it's going well. Uh, Port had a win. My fantasy team, I thought, did well until I saw that you'd pipped me. So that, yeah, that put a bit of a damper on it. But, yeah. I'd like to say I'm sorry, but I am not at all. But, Kerm, second member of the show, mate. How are you going? Mate, I'm down. Um, fantasy team, no good. Lock of the round, no good. Gold Coast Suns, no good. So that is the <laughs> trifecta. Your boy is down. I'm trying to regain. It's mentally tough right now. I'm in the trenches. But I always seem to get myself out, and we'll talk about that in the show. Hey, mate, the beauty, the beauty sorry, of the AFL is there are 23 rounds in the season, so there's plenty of time, mate, uh, plenty of time to get back up. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at a player's performance from a fantasy perspective and other fantasy breakdowns to help you all get game day ready. Let's start it off with how we always do on the show. Kerm, take it away with your pack of the week, mate. Yeah, pack of the week, where we get to bring the community into the show. And for this, for this week, we've got Nugget on Discord, who submitted this pack that you can see on screen now. And I mean, every line has just got a superstar in it. You've got a, a diamond Jack Sinclair, a platinum Hayden Young, a platinum Josh Kelly, a platinum Josh Dunkley, who's finally starting to hit form. And then you've got some young studs as well. Darcy McPherson's been playing well for the Suns. Harry rouston has been playing well for GWS. And you've obviously got Cam Rayner, who's always going to be there and about yeah. the dynasty. Yeah, the dynasty conversation. What a so, pack, man. Holy smokes. Insane pack. Insane pack. So well done to you, Nugget. You'll be receiving your free pack for your pack of the week. And if you want to get involved, submit your packs through Discord. I'm always searching. I've always got my eyes out lurking in the Discord pack opening section to find who our pack of the week on the show is going to be. So definitely get stuck in. Any pack of the week is, is a shout. The criteria this week is just going to be my favourite. Cam's favourite. If you could, if it's going to be a pack of nine, three, or one Suns player, you're probably going probably going to win. So you're going to do get, well. Yeah. Get, get, get on the Discord. <laughs> I want to see some Suns players. Um, but yeah, that's how we do it. What a pack, yeah, dude! That might be one of the better packs we've seen overall. Hey, like that. That's stacked from top to bottom. I, I don't know where these people are opening these packs. I need to get on the same. <laughs> yeah, I'm the area same. We're playing a different I'm game to same. Nugget. <laughs> <laughs> we actually are but let's get into our team review and this week Callum we have you up first you mentioned you fell short of me so I want to I want to see what happened here because you know I like that result but uh get into it mate what, what happened last week yeah so at the time of recording we don't have the leaderboard finalized so we don't know where exactly we sat on it but we do know our scores are correct so I've got 2220 points which is a pretty strong round and I had some big performers the whole way through. So played Cameron, he did well. Colin Rosie was outstanding. Rory Laird as a gold was really good for me. And then Dacos as well. How could you not have him in your team at the moment? So I thought I did really, really well. Only a couple of people let me down, in particular Mitch Duncan and Andy Brayshaw. But I was pretty mm. happy with it. Like I said, I was like, you know what? I'm looking forward to Monday's show. I'm probably going to start moving up the seasonal rankings. I actually didn't. I stayed in the exact same spot. But the, yeah, like I said before, the worst part was that Tom had pipped me once again, which, you know, just drives me crazy. So, yeah, mixed bag this week. I wasn't sure whether I was looking at my team then or your team. It's looking very <laughs> eerily similar to the Zeus cannons, mate. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I like the loyalty here. You, you've paid some loyalty to your Josh Dunkleys, your Stephen Cornelios, your Rosies, your Rory Lads who have been struggling in, in recent rounds. But it's a good lesson for those out there. You, if you put some loyalty and trust into your guns, the odds are they're going to pay you back at some stage. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, how about absolutely. your team, Tom? Well, why don't we get into my team? Yeah, yeah, let's get into it. So... Looking, it was very close in score. It was 31 points. It ended up being the Ooh. difference in the end for the week. So, you know, could have gone either way there. So extremely, I thought it was a solid week. But there was one common theme with a lot of my players is they either exploded in fantasy production or they were just that little bit off this week. I had plenty of players go under their normal averages. So wasn't too happy with some performances, but quite similar to yourself. I had some people carrying, doing some heavy lifting such as Dacos, Jordan Dawson, Zachy Merritt. Uh, Cameron's been really good for me as well. Timmy English has been outstanding all year. And that gold Taranto and Cornelia up front, I'm really loving that combination of those two players for the forward line. So 
Uh, definitely can improve on last week's performance, but I'm honestly very happy overall about how we went because 2,250 points. We take those. I, I blame me not having a Sheasel but, card as being the difference between you and me at the moment because he is an absolute <laughs> jet and I cannot get my hands on him. I'm trying. Transfer market packs, I just can't find him. So there's a good chance that pack of the week this will, week will be from me, just the amount of packs I'm going to open to try and get my hands <laughs> on one of him. What's harder to get now, a Sheasel card or a Dacos card? That's the real question oh, because God. both of them are so hot off the press. Sheasel. Sheasel's Dacos, hot off the press. Yeah. Dacos is still quite expensive, but Sheasel is the hardest card just because he's only been in the game for a little bit. Dacos obviously had all of last year, so there's more cards in circulation. So, yeah, that's what the data's telling us. Well, let's go to our big dog, the big guns, Kermis. Mate, why don't you take away how you went last week because this team is amazing. Oh, the fantasy stresses me out, man. Um, <laughs> this this was not a good week. I made some very silly decisions. Some paid off. I started Chad Warner. Um, which some could say was a little bit of a risk considering how up and down he's been. But he came back um, and his diamond card got me 168 fantasy points on the week, which I was very happy with. But unfortunately, that's where the good news and the, the point of difference plays sort of let me down. I, I went, I, I took out Dacos late on Sunday. I had a platinum Dacos in and I was having a shocker week up until this point. So I was like, you know what? I'll just stick Alex Witherden in <laughs> and see if he can get me a score. And, you know, due to the new rolling lockout that's now on the Game Day Squad Fantasy Sports platform, you're able to do that. You're able to make those audible calls late in the week. And that is an example of how it can bite you in the backside. So <laughs> it Alex Witherden it is... Itself. I love it. I love it. You're sitting there on a Sunday, you've woken up, you're in a panic, and the yep. rolling lockout, which was new to the round, and we're super excited to have in the game, it's claimed its first victim in the team. I love it. First um, victim, and yeah. I'll put my hand up right now and admit it, that could have gone under the rug, but no, Alex with an and just out of my team as quick as he came in. Um, the likes of Luke Ryan, Mason Redmond, Mitch Duncan, they were all very disappointing this week, along with Andrew yeah. Brayshaw and Cozzy Pickett, who was a pod for me in the forward line. So I'll look to make some changes again this week, um, go, heading into round round six. But yeah, who knows where this is going to go on from here. I could make so many changes already. Man, I do want to ask with your team, because I know that you made a big call uh, in your midfield last week with Sam Walsh. How did you think about his performance? And is he going to be a regular feature? Yeah, not good, not great. Um, he was, oh, sorry, not bad, not great. He did, just did Sammy Walsh things. He came back in the team. He had a low CBA percentage. He only had 39% CBA percentage on the game. Um, and the likes of Ed Kerno, George Hewitt, um, obviously Paddy Cripps. Adam Chera was still ahead of him and you could expect that to flip on his head. You you should expect Sam Walsh in the next couple of weeks to break that that mid to high 80s percentage mark for CBAs per game. Um, And that's only going to get his score up in those 120s, 130s. But I'll take his score this week, considering he was playing high off the forward line for most of the game. His 1.4 diamond card got me 154 GDS fantasy points. And in a first game return and that risk, I'll, I'll take that every day of the week. So he might be a mainstay for me. Um, yeah, I obviously love him. It early well, listeners of the show will will know that I love love me some Sammy Walsh. So um, it's going to be hard to get rid of him now. Yeah, and you're right there. If that's his start, then goodness, I'd like to see him once he's in full stride and uh, taking the game on. Uh, but let's get into our next part of the show. It is called the hot seat, and what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at players' performance so far from a fantasy perspective, and maybe shine some light onto some uh, some play not so good. And um, Callum, I believe you're going to kick it off this week, mate. Who have you thrown onto the hot seat? You guys are going to laugh because you know I always call everyone my boy, but this guy definitely is my boy, and it's this, it's tough to do. But I'm putting Andy <laughs> Brayshaw on the hot seat this week. Oh wow! It might be a little Ooh. bit stiff, but he had a shocking round against Kerm Suns on the fr- it was the early Friday game. I was just looking at your team that he was easily the worst performer in your midfield. And you might be going, it's pretty stiff because I think he's the 25th highest average in game day squad at the moment. So you could be saying that's not too bad. But when you, we were all NBA fans, we're loving the playoffs at the moment. Put it in this perspective. If we had yeah. a, an, all, an all NBA team or an all AFL midfield team, he wouldn't even make the third team. He's not even in the top 15 midfielders. So he'd be in somewhere in around the fourth team. And we thought this was a guy that was going to be a nailed on first teamer in our squad of the year 
competing for the top spot in the game. And he just hasn't been that yet. And that game on the weekend really, really did hurt. Um, so I'm putting him on the hot seat because he's, again, his first four rounds have been good, but not great. And this guy has the potential to be great. So I'm putting him on there. Hopefully, I don't I can't see myself dropping him, but hopefully it gives him a bit of a kick and we see a, a better performance heading into round six. Yeah, not not to prolong the, the Andy Brayshaw talk much longer because he's... Is a sour taste in my mouth as well, but do you see this being a long-term thing with him? With the ascension of Caleb Sarong playing as good as he, as he is, and he is... I, the thought has gone through my mind, do I start Sarong over Brayshaw at the moment? Because Sarong is just on an absolute tear right now. So if Sarong can keep that up, where do we see the likes of Brayshaw fitting for the rest of the season, do you think? For me, he's just too talented to not be back. Um, back competing at the top. He was the AFL MVP last year, um, and rightfully so. He was at dominant. So I just think it's a bit of a down patch at the moment. Um, we've seen, you know, Paddy Cripps won the, the Brownlow and has, has had a soft start to the year. You never know what happens, but I expect him to bounce back. But in fantasy, I don't care about that for this season. I'm not getting rid of his card for the, the long term. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely this season, he's um, on the hot seat. Bit, a bit like Bailey Smith, and it's funny to think, we, I remember last year we had Bailey Smith, Sam Walsh, and Brayshaw all in that group, and we're yep. like, who would you pick? Buy, sell, hold. And now Walsh has, hasn't, has missed the first four rounds, has only just come back, and Bailey Smith and Brayshaw just haven't been what we thought they'd be. So that little crop from that year, yeah, things um, we're already starting to move on to the next crop of Dacos and Sheasel and Ashcroft. So. Dynasty football. Yeah, tell me about it. And I do think as well, playing at Norwood Oval would have had a little bit to do with that. We uh, we saw how thin those boundaries can be and you really can't stretch the field playing there. But you are right. He hasn't been up to scratch all season. But in long term as well, I think I agree with you, Callum. Like, he was the MVP last year and we see in patches even this year that he can dominate a game, especially before last in the last game before halftime. I think he kicked a cracking goal to get uh, Frio back into the game. Um, and that... It was really, everything was going against them, but he really stood up in that midfield then and um, made some big plays to, to really bring him back into it. So long-term, I still think he's a Jet. Very optimistic about Brayshaw, but you're right. Like, I don't really mind about long-term. I need that performance right now. You're playing in my team, bro. Give me them points. <laughs> <laughs> but Kerm, I think you're kicking it off with the next one, mate. Why don't you tell us who you've thrown in your hot seat? Because I've had a quick peep. Uh... I, I'm emotionally invested into this one. I know you are, and and I didn't take that into consideration when I put this guy in. Um, but I, the truth is, I could do like I could reach into a, a lolly bag and pick anyone out of my team um, and put them on the hot seat at the moment. But oh. this week, it's going to be Mason Redman out of the Essendon Bombers. Um, <clears throat> this is more so just a PSA to everybody out there, or the coaches listening for Game Day Squad. I selected Mason Redman in round three. And round five. Those are the only t- times I've started Mason Redman this this year. In those rounds, he's averaged eighty. He's put up eighty four points and eighty nine GDS fantasy points. In those other three rounds, one hundred and forty one, one hundred and twenty three, and one hundred and thirty. So my advice to everybody out there is: if you see Mason Redman in my team, do not. He is an absolute as bona fide a must sit as you can imagine. I am an absolute curse on this man, and I'm sorry for anybody else out there who started him when I did, because it is honestly my fault, and I'll put my hand up and admit it. So, Mason Redmond, for the good of the fantasy community, you won't be starting in my team anytime soon. I actually don't know if you're fully to blame here, because what if I told you I've played him twice this year, and it's those exact same oh. two rounds? Like, it's I the show curse. I had a phone call with Callum on the weekend, and I said, of course, Mason Redmond plays bad now that I play him. And I told him, every time I play Mason Redmond, start Ridley. And if I ever start Ridley, start Mason Redmond. Because whatever <laughs> I pick, it will be the opposite person popping off that week. Oh, it's a joke. It is honestly a joke. And he's burnt me in the past. I've been reluctant to start him because last year he burnt me really, really bad. And he is that type of player. Like, he can either win you a round, scoring those yeah. 140s, or he's going to cost you a round as well. So, you know the risk it. going into it with Mason Redmond. Um the boomer yeah. bus type player, and yeah, I want to try and burn him now in the hot seat after he's burnt you. Harsh. Yes. Yeah. Yep. What Ooh, do they you call got it? That, a bit Tom. of payback. But Callum, what's your thoughts then? What's your thoughts on Redmond? Are you, no, are you I, optimistic I, I, about him? I played him as well, so I, he could have been on my hot seat. But you know, 
with that Essendon team, I, they're still a little bit up and down. I know they've had an awesome win on the weekend. So I'm, I'm seeing anything from him from a positive. So I'm not quite ready to throw him on my, my hot seat because I've had some of those good performances that he's put out. So overall, an average of 115, pretty good for a defender. How about yourself, Tom? So you yeah, absolutely. Next, yeah, you got the next hot seat? Yes, sir. And uh, I've been given some stick in recent times for turning a blind eye to Swans players and their performance. But what Ooh. if I told you this will be the second week in a row that I've been on the show that I'm putting a Swan into the hot seat? That player is none other than Holy Callum Warren. Mills, a midfielder for the Sydney Swans. Let me, let me talk through the averages. Let me quickly give you paint the picture for you and let's talk a little bit about his performance so far because I think you might be a bit underwhelmed with what you hear so his averages this season I'm going to read off are 11.6 kicks 11.2 handballs 5.2 marks 3.6 tackles altogether when I say that it doesn't seem that bad it doesn't seem that far off the mark you know 20 plus disposals but what if I told you every single one of those averages is down from last season other than handballs which is up from 1.2 per game so everything is trending down in terms of kicks, marks, tackles. And we've known Callum Mills to be a tackle machine in the past. And really, that's a point of difference in his game where he can score some extra points over some other midfielders. So I'm looking at his season so far. I know in recent times, especially last year, we talked about Mills as being a dynasty stud uh, and that over the next couple of years, he's going to want to be a player that you want to pick up for your club. And whether you play him every week or not, we're not sure, but he definitely has that value. Do you see this dynasty stardom slipping away slowly as this season progresses? Or is he still there with some of the best in the comp? Because I'm unsure about that answer right now. I, we, we've spoken about opportunity equals production. Um, and it is so clear to see that Callum Mills so far this season has slipped down the pecking order in that midfield. Um, Definitely. I mean, you've got the likes of Luke Parker, Chad Warner, James Rowbottom, Errol Gould, and all averaging more centre bounce attendances than Callum Mills this year. And by a country mile, the, the gap between Errol Goulden and Callum Mills is Goulden's 60, uh, 46% and Callum Mills 35% CBAs per wow. game. And he's had one game over 40%. Um, and that was in round three against the Melbourne Demons. And he just so happened to kill it. So a lot of it comes down to his opportunity and his role within the team and the midfield specifically. And if he's trending in this way, it's going to be a hard hole for Callum Mills to, to get out of it. And we've seen that he can get thrown up forward. We've seen that he can play almost like a back pocket role at times under horse. And yeah, it's just so hard to trust him at the moment. I, I could not recommend starting him or putting him anywhere near your team at the moment, to be frank. Yeah, guys, he's on the never ever again list for me unless he Actually, yeah. is absolutely going ballistic his role he's scored five weeks where he's gone 150 plus and we know his role i'm not playing him because there he could be a gun and then horse will be like let's put him behind the ball and his game from a fantasy point of view goes to absolute poo so yeah yeah you were not going to see callum mills I, i'd bet you're not going to see callum mills anywhere near my squad this season and there's a big question mark on him going forward he's actually someone i'd be looking to sell and try and swap in for someone like a row bottom because um, i think long term yeah i know i know big call that's more like <clears throat> what i see with callum mills i don't even think it is a big call um i think the writing's on the wall and if you, if you don't it you'd be remiss to to negate that fact that the production the opportunity his role on the team is just not where it is. And you got guys like Errol Gould and James Robot and Chad Warner who are all younger. They're going to want to see what they have in those three guys for years and years and years to come. And they've all shown immense talent. So, <clears throat> and, and that's not to say Callum Mills hasn't. We've seen how good he can be, um, especially from a fantasy perspective. But you just have to wonder what his role going forward is and... Without that clear role and clear opportunity, you, you cannot start him. I love the I love the discussion here because I agree. It is about that role moving forward for sure. Um, you definitely can't be trusting in someone like Callum Mills right now to be plugging into your midfield and getting those triple-digit scores. Very commonly, we've seen those double-digit scores this year. And 
it's just so funny how much eight months can change someone's mind and their opinion because if you asked us eight months ago i can guarantee we were all not thinking that way but it's fair to think that now like honestly looking at the start of the season looking at this the swans list it's it could be some scary hours moving forward in terms of fantasy for callum mills but let's get into the next part of the show, everybody. I'm going to give you a buy, sell, hold scenario. Callum, you already got warmed up with that, talking about your sell with uh, Callum Mills. But I'm going to give you well, three yeah, new players. Ruthless. I'm going to give you the averages. Yeah, hit us. Well, you're going to have to be very ruthless here because uh, three good players, if you don't mind. Uh, Stephen Canelio, he's got an average of 115 fantasy points this season. I have Jack Sinclair. He's got an average of 113 fantasy points this season and i've got adam trelaw as well with 115 point average for this season i want to buy sell hold go for it how does trelaw keep making his way into these buy sell holds is this the yeah, third this man has an infatuation can we get him out of here i'm sick i'm sick of having to, to put him anywhere else because i'm always going to sell trelaw so that's the easy one for me. Sinclair's the buy um, with his age. I think he's a bit of a long-term thing. And then Caniglio, I would take him over Trelaw right now because Caniglio is a forward in my team, whereas Trelaw is not going to play as a midfielder. So that one's nice and easy for me, Tom. So Trelaw, not... not have, I want him. Haven't been looking at the game. I don't know, man. I look at Trelaw this season and I I like what clearly, I see. Especially clearly when we talk about <laughs> Bailey Smith. <laughs> He is playing well, to be fair. He, he is, is playing really well, and he's not getting bevoed as, as much as um, your Bailey Smiths and Jack McRae. So he is one of the better options for the dogs at the moment, but I just keep going back to, to how injury-prone he's been since he left GWS, yeah, right. and he's just so volatile um, to, to have in your team as, as a long-term keeper. Um, but for me, I'm actually going to keep Stephen Canelio. Um, only a year discrepancy between him and Jack Sinclair. Jack Sinclair's 28, I think, and I think Canelio's 29. Um, and given the the sparsity of options up forward, I think I'm going to keep Stephen Canelio as one of the better set-and-forget options up forward, despite his his struggles last week. Um, sorry, not last yep. week, the week before. week before. He killed it this week. Yeah, unreal this week. And and we should expect to see more of that. Um, Tom Green has been susceptible to some attention, some tagging attention, and that means that Stephen Cornelio, there's no reason why he shouldn't be stepping into that midfield a little bit more. Um, and then I'll hold Jack Sinclair. He's he's going to be a gun. He's gonna. I think his scores this year aren't going to match what he produced in 2022. There's so many people down back in, in St. Kilda. I mean, Callum Wilkie, just quietly... For St Kilda is averaging like 125 points in his last three games. Callum Wilkie. What about St Kilda just quietly? As a, as a whole club. Yeah, yeah. Ross the boss. Ross Lyon, just quietly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Jack Sinclair, there, there's going to be opportunity to score back there. He, he hasn't lost any of his speed. His kicking's been down a little bit in efficiency this year, but he's going to get the ball in his hand, so I'll hold him and then sell Trelaw. Um, but can we please put history. Trelaw on the never ever again list for buy, sell, hold? Because <laughs> I feel never, bad. Ever again, I, I, I like him, right. but I think I've sold him three from three times. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think um, I think I've got a good replacement for him next week. Uh, no, I know who it's going to be. No, you don't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> moving on quickly. <laughs> no, then I'm just to kidding. But... Lock of the round, guys. Um, I'm moving there. I've realised oh. that I actually don't want to move on to this quickly because I had my first proper miss, and I. It was heartbreaking. I had Tom Second. Green down for 115 points, and I think he only got 112. So I had a loss. You guys both had a loss. You can see that you haven't moved up the rankings at all. We'll go through who you've missed in a second. But the community, James from the Thursday night show, coach of Munko's Minions, correctly picked Tuke Miller, was it, Kerm? I think to go big. So Yeah, Tuke community. Miller, 120. There you go. So they have jumped me for top spot. Very keen to see who we have on our live show on Thursday night and who they're going to pick for that. But guys, we'll go through and have a look at your picks. Who did you have, Tom? Who'd you miss out on and who are you going for this week? Uh, I backed in Libba with his big 200 gamer. Had him for 125 fantasy points. Uh, was off the mark on the weekend. Just wasn't quite around there. Uh, I, I thought he was going to get... Good, good disposal rate, a lot of tackles. Just didn't play out that way. So it was unfortunate. Uh, it is what it is. And 
I didn't mind it. You know, it's a memorable moment for him for the season. So if I was ever going to pick liver for the season, it was going to be that week for me. Um, but moving on and moving forward, I need to have a banger pick. It's been two weeks in a row that I haven't moved up these ranks and you're just giving me these, these opportunities and I'm not taking them. So <laughs> hopefully I can take it this week. And I'm looking at a particular matchup, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, the Tigers have the Demons this week and will Tom Lynch be back? There are a couple question marks. But something that I don't think is in question is that if the Tigers have a chance of winning this game, Taranto needs to dominate. So on that note, I've got Taranto locked in for 136 game day squad fantasy points. We said we aren't playing safe this year, and my boy is going to eat in this matchup. So I can't wait to see him. 136, I'm putting him down for. And uh, yeah, mate, that, that, round, that rounds it off. 136. That is a so day. Taranto's gone over 36 one of five games this year, and he's already had an awesome start to the year. So that is going to take a monster effort. So no, I, I love the, I love it, Tom. Shoot your shot. Shoot your <laughs> shot. Shoot the shoot. Kerr, who have you gone with? Um, yeah. So, a bit embarrassing. Tail between my legs. Um, I went the Andy Brayshaw pick early on, early on in the season to try and claw my way back. Um, and it misfired in a big way. He missed out on the 127, obviously. He had a stinker week, his worst week by far. Um, <clears throat> and you could see the other Reds on the screen. Nick Dacos, I missed out on him earlier on in the season as well. So those are two absolute stud guns uh, that I have missed out on. But we're going to put that behind me. I'm not going to think about it, much like the Suns. If I think about it, it makes me sad. Um, so I'm going to think about the Greens. And I had some ru- uh, some ruck luck. Uh, most recently with Grundy hitting 120, and I'm going to follow that on with Rowan Marshall taking on uh, Tom DeConing and the Carlton Blues this week. Rowan Marshall in that matchup should, on paper, uh, I'll preface that, on paper should have a big day. Um, <laughs> keep in mind that I am selecting him for lock of the round, so this is now a danger zone. Um, and I've locked him in for 121 GDS fantasy points. So I need this so bad, big dog. If you can get me that, I'll be a very happy man. And hopefully we can start a run going on from now. <laughs> Dude, I can't believe you played your Dacos and Brayshaw Cards oh. in the first five rounds of the season and had that red on both. That get it off the screen. Honestly, hurts. <laughs> Speaking of, Callum, why don't you let us know what happened last week and who you're looking for this week? Yeah, so like I said, Tom Green um, just fell short, heartbreaking. Um, but this week, I'm going with the man, Jordan Dawson. I love watching him play. So I just, you know, not that I need an excuse to solely watch him um, on a weekend, but I'm going to lock him in for 115 and just watch him like a hawk because I love his new midfield role. He's absolutely killing it. And it must suck to see so that the Swans let him go. And Aaliyah, Aaliyah, outstanding. <laughs> Their two best players have gone to Adelaide, so must must be tough. That is so much cap, mate. <laughs> I know you don't even believe that as well. <laughs> That's funny, though. That's funny. But 115 for Jordan Dawson. He's playing a bit safe, mate. Coming, coming back to the, to the norm. What's going on? Don't need to do anything crazy, mate. Don't Jordan Dawson crazy. could have that by half time, mate, in that midfield role. I'll tell you what, he's been killing it in that new role. I do agree. It's, uh, it's something to see, and I'm very excited moving forward. You gotta say this man has the Krabby Patty formula because he is the best out of us three at the moment. Um, and 115 for Dawson off the back of 156 might just be the go. So you can't oh, knock it until they're ahead of him. The Krabby like Patty formula. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Well, that's going to wrap us up, guys, for another episode of Game Day Squad's Aussie Rules Show. If you made it this far in the video, we appreciate it. We have all of our links for the socials down below. We've got plenty of announcements coming out. And we've got the live stream on Thursday. So follow us on YouTube and our socials so you can get in that and leave some comments for us. We're giving away packs as well in that live stream. So peep the Discord and Kern will have more for you later on. But thanks for checking in with us. and We'll catch you in the next one. See you later.